In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In waters of baptism, Mr. Corsi died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. We'll have the entrance Good morning once again, brothers and sisters. And so we are gathered here today to celebrate the life of Mr. Kosi, to celebrate life. I know there is sadness, there is you know, that mourning and grief, but we celebrate his life. We celebrate who he was. We celebrate what he did and how he lived his life. And so we come to pray for him, accompany him also with our prayers that God will continue granting him that internal happiness that we all seek, that we all search for. And above all, also is an opportunity also to reflect on our own lives, you know, to learn something from his life and to understand that we too, our time is coming. And when our time comes, that tent is folded because its work is done here on earth. But it's folded not forever, but there is another life that endures forever, and that's what we come to celebrate, that Mr. Kosi is still living, his spirit is still so much with us. For those moments that we have lived this life as if, you know, that's all we got, those moments that we have lost hope, that there is another life, let us ask God for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, 
that I have greater sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, me too, though. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Greetings to everyone, both local and abroad. Thank you so much for coming to celebrate the life of our Father. Today I'd like to say just a few words about a truly remarkable man, a man whom my brother Jason and I are lucky to call our dad, Neville William Cossey. What a life well lived. For many of us, the definition of a life well lived will mean different things. I like to think that a life well lived is one where you did your best to live your life on your own terms. A life where you touch the hearts of many by doing good deeds and helping others. Not because you expect a reward, but by a way of thinking that teamwork efforts and that if we all help each other, the ship of life will sail a lot smoother and we can all enjoy the cruise together. A life in which we experience true love from those around us every day. And Neville lived a well-lived life. He had many passions, he had many accolades, and he was greatly loved and loved very many things in life. However, if there is one thing that I can put at the top of the list of what, if you're talking about the driving force that powered the man Neville Cossey, it would be family above all else. Born to Rita Cossey on the 4th of August, 1952, in Industry Hall, St. Philip. He was the precious brother to his sisters, Elnora, Hazel, and Diana. I think it's safe to say that Neville learned his respect for women from his mom and his life with his sisters. For even though he only had 12 short years with his mother, Rita, she was the empress of his heart. He would tell Jason and I stories about his mom, like how she would take him to church every day sometimes twice a day, and three times on Sunday. <laughs> and that is how he learned to have faith and know about the Lord. His stories were always told with such love. And if you ever got punished by her, it was only because she loved you. She ne he would always speak highly of her, and he would never forgive anyone for speaking any other way. It is at this point that I will have to share a fun fact about Neville Cossey. Neville loves to share. I have been told, and Jason has too, many times by my Aunt Hazel and Auntie Eleonora that if there is something that he had gotten from his mother, it is his love to share. If Daddy had a meal, and my brother and my mother can attest to this, he would take it and split it into portions to share with whomever was around him. If it was a portion of pie, rice, chicken, and salad, it could be split four ways, and everybody had to have a sample to enjoy. Neville grew up in Seeley Hall and the surrounding area, and he would tell us countless stories of boy days. In keeping with that theme of sharing, one of his favorite stories to tell was how Granny Rita would always put on a daily pot of food to make sure that not only were her children fed a proper home-cooked meal, 
but every single cousin or friend who came over was to partake and feel like family. Daddy would make sure that that tradition was honored throughout his life. Even if someone came to the house to work, dad would make sure that they were offered a cup of tea, a glass of water, or at least something to eat. You could not do a job on an empty stomach. When, he's, when we speak of love and dad's respect for women, here is where I must place his love for his sisters. Auntie Elnora Hatch took over the role of mother figure as well as big sister when Granny Rita passed. And she took on that mantle so well that Daddy would do anything for her. Daddy would tell us stories of climbing trees and pitching the marbles with Aunt Hazel, swimming in the sea with Aunt Di, and countless other stories growing up with them and their cousins. Many and a dozen. I cannot let list them all. For Daddy would never leave out one. Even if they had a disagreement, he would have to come back and speak respectfully to them, because that was his character. I couldn't talk about Daddy's love for family or respect for women enough, and surely it would be remiss of me if I didn't take this moment to mention the queen of his heart, Joyce Cossey, a.k.a. AKA our loving mom. Neville met Joyce as a teenager when they were both working at Louis Bailey in Bridgetown. Mom was a shy, sweet, petite, beautiful introvert, as Daddy always liked to say and Daddy being a people person who couldn't help but gravitate to everyone, and everyone gravitated to him, was charismatic and handsome and charming. What a pair they made. <laughs> we could say that the rest is history, for Neville and Joyce Cossey got married on Saturday the 17th of August, 19, 1974, sorry. And they had many adventures together, and their love produced many great memories and wonderful things. These included myself in May 1984 and my loving brother Jason in 1987. Our cousins Greg, Trisha, Annette, Laura, Diana, Kathy, Richard, Aaliyah, Alexis, Nicole, Michelle, and so many more. My list could go on. We were all raised up together to enjoy many fun times with Dad. For most of my cousins, I think we can all say we felt more like siblings than cousins because dad would never want anyone feeling left out of anything that he was involved in. All of us received lessons in life, having fun adventures, thank you, about him learning how to fly kites, going fishing off the cliffs, having so many fond memories that we can all share. When our school friends came to join and spend time with us, dad was never a bore. And he always had a way of making kids that were coming over to our house know that you were cared for. If you came to Neville Cossie's house for a day, you were his child for a day. There are so many hours that he would also spend giving us our time to ourselves, but then he had to join in on the fun. He would roughhouse and play with you and know that you were loved. But if he raised his voice to say no, it meant no, <laughs> and, you were and you learned quick to respect it. <laughs> but he would always come back and tell you the reason why no existed, and the reason why it was always because he loved and cared for you, and he wanted you to re return safely. When we got older, and he still had interest in what my brother and I were doing, and also with whom we were dating, he loved his children dearly, so it meant that he wanted that whoever we were with treasured us as much as he treasured us. And he wanted them to know it. <laughs> and he also knew and treasured those persons that we brought into our lives. Even if initially he was Mr. Tough Guy, he always mellowed, he always showed love, and he respected who Jason and I wanted to share our hearts with. He loved I Ian and Leanne as much as he loved his children. And he showed love to every person that ever came into our life. Neville loved our mother Joyce, which meant that she, he also loved her family as well. I think it's easy to say that all of mom's siblings and all of her cousins and extended family could all tell you about how dad would give his time to help them. He would treat them and honor them and love them 
with as much care and diligence as if they were his own direct family. Neville worked it for years at Louis Bailey in the camera department in Bridgetown and is known by many for this. And when he became the manager of the camera department and sales in Da Costa's Manning's Mall and then also the port division as well, he went on to do many numerous things and re receive many awards. He had, would go to numerous international camera conventions, training seminars and exhibitions and everywhere he went you would hear reports about his abilities, his knowledge in cameras, his award-winning personality. People always spoke highly of his integrity, his charisma, his brilliant smile and professionalism, and his way of talking and dealing with people that was pretty much always guaranteed to win over people. Many times he would tell us he, would, he was told he should run for prime minister or because of his knowledge of knowing people. Though Daddy had the gift of being drawn to people, he never craved that kind of limelight. He was very reserved and loved to help others, but didn't need to have the accolade. However, he always did find it funny when people used to mix him up for celebrities <laughs> whenever he traveled, because he was so immaculately dressed. And his personality, I mean, honestly. One of the favorite encounters we had was we took Michaela to Miami and everyone from the staff in the airport to the hotel that we were in, including the general manager, thought that daddy was Obama. <laughs> and daddy went with it. <laughs> he thought it was the funniest thing ever. <laughs> if Neville's first love was family, his second love would be the great outdoors. Photography, sports, tools in every shape or form big boy toys as we like to call them for him. Dogs and being on the move all have to be mixed into one. Neville Cossey thrived in activity. <laughs> he was the human Swiss army knife or the Bajan MacGyver, as best described, a self-made Mr. Fix-It. Often he was self-taught on how to fix something and relished in being able to help someone in need. If he could do it cost-effectively, and better yet, with his own two hands, nothing made him happier in life. <laughs> he believes so much in teach a man how to fish, and that theory will work through life for anything you needed. When Jason and I learned to drive, he had to make sure that not only did we know how to drive, but how to change the tires on the car, how to make sure that the oil was in the engine, and every single car fact that needed to be known before he gave you the keys. <laughs> it is now that I can insert Dad's love for storytelling. I think that this is where I can say I got the flair for it, and the love for it as well. My family all here can recall many fun and interesting stories of Dad, and can describe with many fun actions and colorful expressions and his way of emotions, that when he told a story, you felt like you were there and you were living it with him. I think it is why dad loved cameras and videos and anything technology, because it helped with storytelling and so much more when you had photos to set the scene. Neville would tell stories of growing up in St. Philip with such love and devotion to his homeland that you couldn't help but fall in love with him. And he could understand why he would say, Barbados is the only place he could ever call home. Neville valued friendships, and he was blessed to be surrounded by many good people, helpful, long-lasting, true friends. Dad would tell us stories of boyhood days growing up riding bicycles with friends like Willie, Richardson, Everton, Cyril, growing up with Spencer, all of his cousins, from Barbara to Frank. The list is too many for me to mention all now. Many of his friends from childhood, Daddy kept for his whole life. Many checked in on him every day. He could be driving down a road, and Dad would tell my brother and I, do you know that is my cousin? Call their name, blow the horn, had to say hi, always smiling, and then would tell us a story about that particular person. <laughs> that was Daddy. He had stories that could rival the Hardy Boys. Doing things with, my, with his cousins 
that my brother and I can only dream of doing because we would never be allowed to do them now. <laughs> and he knew the dangers and wanted to keep us safe. He treasured his family, true friends, and all the fond memories he had with them. Friends like Balti, Patsy, Mama, and a truly, the list could go on. But Dali valued his friends to help him when he needed it, and equally, they could always depend on him. If you knew Neville Cossey, you would also know he had a very strong sense of pride and a fierce need to protect. He was born in the month of August, and we joke always that his birth, as his birth month dictated, dictated, he was like the majestic Leo lion, royal in appearance, proud, strong, loved to roam outdoors, and protected his pride with diligence and devotion. He would look out for family, friends, and neighbors, and anyone he felt that was in need if he could help, he would. And when his sisters traveled overseas to shop, dad had to go to be guard detail, as well as bag holder, and also food inspector. <laughs> Even when my brother and I were full grown adults, he would get upset with us for traveling without him, somehow convinced that he could somehow fit himself in our suitcase if he tried and be able to follow us around just to make sure we were safe at all times. <laughs> he was a man that his home was his castle, literally. <laughs> he hated to see Mom and Jason and I leave the house. I would often be heard saying, I don't know why you all want to leave this place. Don't you all know you live in your very own Sam Lord's castle? If we had to go anywhere, he would have to look for a reason to let to, for us to stay. It was like he wanted to be our bodyguard at all times. He was a fierce protector, but it's only because he loved you. Funny enough, he wanted to keep us safe at home, but he could never stay still or in the same place for very long. Mm -hmm. I cannot say how many times mom would answer the phone for somebody wanting to talk to dad, and she would have to say, let me check, because where I left him last, there is no guarantee that he is still there or if he's even home, because he might have just gone for a walk without telling me. <laughs> there is not a back road or an off-beaten track in Barbados that Daddy did not know. He loved Barbados and was famous for saying, all roads lead home. If you drop me anywhere in Barbados, I will find my way back home. Never, Neville built a very vast majority of our home himself with his friends and his family. He loved to build and use his hands. Tools and lots of them. Daddy played with tools all day if you'd let him. And when he retired from camera sales in 2009, he started a construction equipment rental trade, still occasionally doing camera repairs and sold albums. When things went more digital and albums and film went out of style, Dad shifted his focus to other things. He was always willing to learn new things and would never let that stop him if it was that he didn't know it just yet. I think he wanted to, us all to learn the lesson, always adapt, never give up, and always do your best to move forward. When he retired, he still kept notoriously busy. When not doing construction or playing with or entertaining his granddaughters, Bethany, Michaela, and Cameron, all having fun times with them, with his Energizer Bunny personality. He loved to see them smile and be happy, running around with them as though he was a child himself, going for walks, taking rides on a bike, playing road tennis, one of his favorite sports, playing football or cricket, helping fix things. He always was on the move. Daddy relished in sports and wanted everyone to join in. I think that's why he was so happy with Include You Sports, because he, he even said, Sports for all abilities. What could be better? Movement and doing good. One of the things I think we'll miss the most about Dad is how he would always put on music, especially when he needed a pickup. When we were smaller, he would pick us up and twirl us around the room and dance with us on Sundays. Nothing was off limits. From Elton John to Soka, classical to country, Dad always had to have a rhythm in his heart. I think it's safe to say that dad lived a beautiful life. He saw the good in life and he saw the ugly.
but he chose to give us memories that were filled with good more than they were of any that would bring us sorrow. We have many memories that we can all share with each other of our times with him and what made him special. And I'm sure he'll be happy in heaven to hear and love and great with humility and pride at all the wonderful things that people will remark on him. Neville may be gone from this earthly plane where we can see him, hear him, and touch him, but he's never truly gone. He has touched so many souls and made such a lasting memory for each of us. He has gained his heavenly wings on the 4th of March. Soon we will be, and he would have wished that he had more time with us, but his heavenly father needed him to come home. And now he can move freely and swiftly as the wind, fixing things in mysterious ways, whispering words of advice to us when we need it in our ears, whenever he wishes, <laughs> watching over and protecting us and loving us from a higher place. I'll end with this story from infamous dad for one of his favorite stories to us. And that is his promise that was fulfilled by Granny Rita. When daddy was growing up and he loved his bicycle, he kept such good care of it and treasured it so much that Granny Rita told him, when you turn 17, because of how well you keep your bike and how much I can see you love to move, I am going to help you get your first car. Now as a little boy, 17 seemed a long way away, but daddy got very excited and thrilled at the idea because Granny Rita Cossie's word was her bond. And even if she didn't know how she was going to do it, if she promised you something, it was delivered. So when she passed, when daddy was 12, he thought for a moment, well, there's no way she's keeping her promise now. It's got to be all up to him. Daddy began working at Louis Bailey, as I said before, and he treasured and was always so good at working with customers, both local and visitors, with exceptional service to all. And he recalled to us an elderly English gentleman whom he assisted many times for camera needs came to him one day and told Daddy he'd want to speak to him privately. He told Daddy he'd always admired how above and beyond his service was to all of his customers, and he wanted to give Daddy something to show his appreciation for all the good work he had done. He explained to Dad that he had no children to leave anything to, and he'd been told by doctors that he didn't have long for this world. He had sorted his affairs with the bank, I wanted Daddy to take over the possession of a mint condition car that he had in his possession. Daddy couldn't believe it. Almost to the day, Daddy got his first car in time for his 17th birthday. And he is convinced and told us many times, Granny Rita made it happen. She kept her promise. Somehow, a part of him never gave up on that hope that she would deliver, and she did. So in closing, Neville William Cossey lived a wonderful life. He shared his love and his light with many, and he will be forever cherished for that. Until we meet again, Dad, help St. Peter to make sure that pearly gate doesn't squeak, show the angels how to knock a cricket ball straight down to the boundary, keep an eye on all of us, and make sure your girls laugh in their dreams. Don't worry, all of us will keep each other safe, and we know that you have our backs. We love you, Daddy and always will. May we all remember Neville Cossey for his life well lived. Please stand for the opening prayer. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord, as our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened. May our hope of resurrection of your, de of your departed servant, Neville, also find new strength through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings.
The first reading is taken from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 to 8. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time has come for me to depart. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. All there is to come for me now is the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all those who have longed for this appearing. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. I am the bread of life. No one who comes to me will ever be hungry. No one who believes in me will ever be thirsty. But I have told you that you have seen me and you do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me 
will come to me, and one who comes to me will certainly not drive away, because I have come down from heaven to do not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Now this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing at, of all that he has given to me, but that I should raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and that I should raise him up. I should raise up that person on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Good morning to you all. Don't mind too much my hopping. Um, just a few days ago, I was quite nice. Good and look at me now hopping. And why I'm doing that? Because I remember when I began to feel pain in my knees. I was. I mean, I. I, I was. I, I think I can boast and say that I was never the first parish priest of Sacred Heart Church because although the church existed only before I went there, I became the first parish priest and he was most present. I suspect Joyce forced him, but anyway, the point he came. Um, he was there when I, when, I was, when, I, when I had my mass of induction. And this time, I, I don't ever forget. There's several things. But I want to begin this sermon this morning by saying to all of you that that eulogy, long as it was, is in fact a Bible story. Many of us support the scriptures that, that was in the past. I remember years ago when I was at St. Patrick's Cathedral as the administrator, Father, um, oh yes, let me, let me do it right there, I forget. A Monsignor Harcourt Blackheaver asked me to extend the condolences to the family. When he heard of, when he heard of Neville's death, he was most, he was deeply touched there, deeply touched. And he said, I pity I won't be there for the funeral, but let them know um, that I be with them in spirit, so I have convey that. Monsignor Vincent went to, and went to, to, to Jerusalem. Yeah, you come in? I said, no, nah, but that's too far. I didn't bring that. So I didn't go. And he brought back some flowers and, and, and a card, placed on a card, and marked flowers from the Holy Land. And I kept those flowers for quite a while in my, in my prayer book. I treasured it. So one day, a lady said, Father Paul, she saw it, it fell out. She said, Father Paul, what's that? I said, these are flowers from the Holy Land. The, the, the petals from the Holy Land. She said, she laughed. She laughed. I said, oh, why did you laugh? She said, Father Paul, I asked you, you said, you, what, what you said? I said, but I'm not joking. She said, Father Paul, come on, Father Paul. The, 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 Jerusalem is in the Bible only. She did not believe that Jerusalem is real. And many of us, don't laugh too much, many of us do not realize that Jerusalem is real. The only battle, of course, what happened there today? You wonder if that's a real holy land in truth, you know what I mean? But it's real. It's, it's, and so, um, I, as I said, I, I, I remember, so, what I, why I said that at the beginning, I didn't know how to start this, this, this sermon, you know, and then the eulogist gave me the start, which is, I don't have to preach much, you know why? Because what you hear there today is a Bible story. Check the Bible properly, you'll see there. It's really, it is really and truly human beings retelling their story, you know, and their experience of God. From Genesis to Revelation, the whole thing. Who was there when God let there be light? I mean, it's written as if, as if somebody was there. Maybe there. Who was there with Cain and Abel when God said, Cain, I warning you, there's only Cain and Abel if you take the Bible as, as written there. But they're there. So this this came, it got the be Cain's story. It got the Adam's story. Who was there when Adam was called? It got to be Abraham. So Abraham was called. Be, so do you check it out. It, in fact, the Bible, the Bible is not. You see, it's a sacred book. Yes, it's a it's a holy book because in there we encounter God. But how do we encounter? We encounter God through people's record of what they what they experience in their lives. Today, we heard not just a story, you know. We don't just hear, we, like, we, we, we just didn't hear an experience of a daughter and the son there to support her and the rest of the family. We didn't hear about a person, you know. We heard about a person who was loved by God 
and who appreciated that love to the point where he made sure that he took his time for that person who, who, was, in, who was dear to him. I had the privilege, as I told you, of being the parish priest there at the time. And of course, his wife. I, I used to say, I won't, I'm, I'm ashamed I had a, a tussle about that, you know. No matter what we have, I used to, I used, I used to say to Joyce, I remember Joyce, I used to say, Joyce, how does Neville show me you get me so early in the morning? She'd say, Father, she, and he would tell me, if you, have, you really have to go in truth, but if you have to go, go. Oh, well, I, I am the priest. And when I get there, the, the, the priest is set up already. And sometimes he's there too. That's, that's what me, that's what me, it, 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 I mean, we Christians misunderstand what, what our God is. You know? Our God, is, I mean, the prayers we say, that prayers are more God, you know. The other day I heard a preacher say, I'm not, I'm not criticizing the preacher, I'm not, okay. I heard a preacher say the other day, them get there in the, in, the, in the churches and praying for people who are dead. You can't you think God, and God, and God, and God, God doesn't know that, 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 that he must be merciful? That's a waste of time. You're right, you know. If our attitude is that we that we're gonna say because we say God have mercy on Neville. If that's the case, you're right, you know, we we come in, you mean you mean we know more better than God? Prayers don't move God, you know. Prayers move us. What happened here today? I am I've become very selfish. I won't tell you that. You know why? Because I know when my turn comes, somebody will be there to do what we're doing here for Neville. That's what it's all about. It's it's it's, it's, it's not it's not for God. God has mercy on Neville regardless. Did you hear what was read just now? You heard, the, you heard the gospel? It is my Father's will that I should lose nothing. That is Jesus. To lose nothing. You heard it was heading on Lose nothing. For years you've been preaching this, 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 ju this, this just God. This, 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 this God who's going to judge you. You sin, hell. You don't, you, you don't sin, heaven. I'm not, I don't go and tell what Father Paul say, you can sin and go and go to heaven. I ain't saying that, you know. I'm just saying, that's what we keep remembering. I told him the other day that a friend, that a, a lady, that a, one of the big, one of the one, but the lady I see after from around the next entry that she died, I'm going to bury her. And we know her, and she was quite a character, okay. And in, in the first person saying, you know, I hope, I hope she repent of her sin before she died because I don't think I'm see God's face. How dare her? Who, who, uh, uh, she hopes, no, here, no, she, she hopes, eh? So maybe God don't hope to, go on to God, me. you mean she better than God? But that's how we are with God. I ain't seen those you like, and so today, I, I come and join the Father Moses, and, 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 and commending to God, the soul of someone who lived, and who loved, and who cared for his God. Amen. That's the message this morning. That's, that's it. That's what's important. Sin and mistake and error and fault and failing, that is God's business, not mine. And, and never business. That's, that's all about it. You know, one of the things that I learned, I nearly finished it because the sermon, that's the, I really mean that, baby, the eulogy was the sermon. Um, my, my congregation was retired, but of course, they, 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 I got so old, they got rid of me now, so I, I got another parish now. But they got tired me saying this. When I, one of my secrets of sacred heart, more than any of the other parishes, because I was near the congregation. I, 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 when, I, 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 when I first came there, I, I knew there were some people who knew me before. And when I'm preaching, I will, I'll pick out in the congregation people who will, um, you know, whom I know supported me and will listen to me whatever happens. Whenever Neville came, he was one of them. Once I see, once I see, and I see him, I, I say, good. So when I'm preaching, I look at everyone, and I'm preaching, but I'm looking at Neville. And once, and because you said, this is what you look at. Why do I make a joke on it? But I always knew for Paul when to wind up. Because once I see I get this, or I get that, then I know, hey, Father Paul, you lost Neville. You lose everybody. <laughs> if you lost a supporter, and, and I used to love when he came here because, I mean, I, 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 I used to pick him out and say, you, there are several, I, I, I said, uh-uh, one, that was what it was. And one Sunday, I preached. I, I, I suspect the person is here too, the person. And it was true, I, I, I was all over the place. I didn't know how to land, I was like a plane that the wheel won't come down. <laughs> and at the end of, this, of the mass, this, this particular gentleman said, Father Paul, 
You were all over the place. I couldn't follow you. And, 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 and I don't know if Neville had heard, but they were coming out of the church. I mean, they never got me said, Father Paul, that was good. That was real good. <laughs> I could, at least it put some, it, it gave me a little hope after that. <laughs> but, but that was what it was. And, and, I mean, to be honest with you, never, I didn't really talk a lot of foolishness to that morning, you know. But for, for you, it was real good. That's, that's just, it, it's so, today, as we say farewell, remember, that, that, that you heard in hearing the life of Neville Cossey. What you heard was a Bible story. I say that to say this. We too are writing Bible stories by our lives. They do not become Bible stories. They are all the Bible stories. You know why? Because God loves all of us. It is you heard the gospel again? It is never the will of my father that he should lose anything, anything. God loved the world so much, not in the John 3, 6, the other chapter. Not God loved the good ones. God loved the world so much. My last comment there on that, I plead, because we live in a world now, when you live in the world, in the world of metanoia, you're killing all kinds of people, of, 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 um, and only because we got power and we got money, and the world of Russia, because we got power and money and, 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 and arms, and killing people. Look at Haiti, though. Haiti ain't got nothing. So nobody thing after them. In a, in a world of that nature, one can tend to believe, where is God? God, God is not. God, I will leave this message with you this morning. God is not in those situation. God is with those who are victims of that situation. I leave this message with you this morning that the same experience that never has gone through, has gone through, Nothing you got to go through. All of them got to go through. All of us have to go through. And the only thing I don't like about all of that is the fact that God loves Metaneo and them no less than he loves each of us. Why? Because God created us in his own image and likeness and he wants none of us to be lost. Therefore, I beg you, if you're going to mean, if never means anything to us, let's strive to live the kind of lives that when we come to die, our story will be a Bible story. Amen. Please stand for the prayers of the faithful. Let us in faith call upon God, the Almighty Father, who raised Christ, his Son, from the dead, as we pray for the salvation of the living and the dead. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. We, pray, we pray for Neville, who in baptism has given the pledge of eternal life that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints. We pray to the Lord. For our brother who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day. We pray to the Lord. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped, helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. We pray to the Lord. Lord for the family and friends of our brother, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord who wept after the death of his friend Razras. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for all of us assembled here to worship in faith that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, may the prayers of those who cry to you benefit the souls of your servants. O Lord, free them. We pray from all their sins and make them share us in your redemption. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We'll now have a collection collected and we have an offer to a hymn in Neville's honor toward the Barbados Cancer Society and in, in Credo Sports Academy.
we don't have what is called the final commendation. The commendation of the remains. I like that term remains because it's not a commendation, it's the final commendation. Neville, let's uh, not fool ourselves. Eh? The remains, that, that, that's you know, gone to ashes. And it's a beautiful poem that speaks about that. Eh? Tell me not in mournful numbers. I'm telling you, you learned that poem in school. That you have to be 60 plus to know that poem. Tell me not in mournful numbers. Life is but an empty dream. For the soul is dead as slumbers. And, and then they, 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 they want to talk about dust, the word to dust returnest was not spoken of the soul. That is refers to this. Dust, that's dust and ashes. But that is not what, that's not all there is. The body goes to dust, never lives on. And you know he lives on? Because he breathed the breath of God. And you know, again, you know, another sermon, don't be frightened. No, another sermon. Um, he breathed the breath of God. Because in Genesis, we hear God breathed. Of all the created, we be the only ones there. Eh? All the created, let there be, let there be, let there be. And then he be fashioned and he breathed into man the breath of life. God can't die. And therefore, if we breathe the breath of God, it's, 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 the body holds the soul. The body. And the body's gone. The body said, never, I never like, carry you along. I carry seven. You, I suppose you get three, three squares and ten. I give, I give a little more. Never, I, I can't go anymore. I, 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 I had enough. I can't go anymore. But he lives on. And so we're commending the body until one day it's raised a spiritual body. So before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Neville. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day, one day, we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death forever. Please stand. And so we say, Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Neville, Neville William Cossey, may Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, Amen. and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. In baptism, Neville died with Christ and rose with him to new life. We put holy water on this body, remembering that, it's in the, it's in, that he began his life in Christ, in baptism. So we, even to, we therefore bless the holy water. And we say, Neville William Cossey, may angels lead you into paradise. Neville, may the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Neville, may choir of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham. And where Lazarus is poor no longer, Neville, may you find eternal rest. Farewell, Neville. Farewell until we meet you around the throne of God. You always smiled when I referred to my glass of wine. We will have the, the heavenly wine when I come to join you one day. When we all come to join you, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, through the death of your son on the cross, you destroyed our death through his rest in the tomb. You hallowed the graves of all who believe in you. And through his rising again, you restore us to eternal life. God of the living and, not, and the dead, accept our prayers for those who have died in Christ 
and are buried with him in the hope of rising again. Since they were true to your name on earth, let them praise you forever in the joys of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrow. You are, you are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. And let perpetual life shine May upon he rest him. in peace. Amen. May his soul and the soul of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our service is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks. Thanks indeed.